Blessed is the man that walketh not under the counsel of the heathen, nor sitteth in the seat of the can fall, but he light is another love the Lord, and in this Lord I see I did it sun rise and sun down. He go deal like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. Him leap never ago with her, and whatsoever him jewel shall prosper. Yay! The heed and them now they saw them deal like a chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the heed and them never go tamp on judgment at the sin among them in the congregation of the righteous for the Lord God Jah. Never the way of the righteous and the way of the sin among them always and always. I go perish. Let the people of the most high God say, Jah. Kadamawe Grumabi Ate La E Higzag Beer Tana Istalin Abba Shante 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 Kadamawe Grumabi Ate La E Where two centuries meet in the name of the Most I Jah a death so Jaja death. If Jaja never build up your house, the builder I go build it in vain. Same way, if Jaja never watch upon them, same house will build for you. The watchman I go watch it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they may save. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Jah shall deliver him from all of them. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High Jah shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I give thanks and I say unto your name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Amasa Yehuda, Yehuda Amasa, Nagustin Augusta Daniel, Komaya Sataya. I'm a na pio 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 waya. Kedama we gruma beati la e. This is the black pot. Eki e kukushunamo where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And each time this black pot rests on the fire, there is something some shows cooking. Now, the black pot represents the continent of Africa and the ingredients that come together in this black pot to be subjected to some amount of heat to produce food that is nutritious, appetizing, ah, and very some shots also will represent us as the people of Africa and beyond. My brother, my sister, we need that sacrifice. We need to be allowed to be subjected to some amount of heat in order to produce food. In this case, development for our continent, our people, our land. That is why we call this the black pot, aka Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. My brother, my sister, we are live on Pan-African TV. Remember, we are number one. We are the masters of Pan-Africanism on TV. We don't talk politics. We talk patriotism. This is the black pot. We are also live on Ghana Web TV, also live on Black Empire TV. And today we have a lot of things to talk about. Take our numbers off the screen. Tell us, how do you find our show? You can also do business with us. This show is well watched via satellite. We are all over the continent of Africa and beyond. And we are on social media as well so your business can never fail with us let us be that lifeline to your staggering business line the more the african businesses prosper the more we also prosper this is the show that looks at rewiring the thinking of the african this is the show that deals with the mindset of the people this is the black pot aka kukushonomo where we speak truth to power first thing i want to look at Watch it, my youth. Ghana first becoming reality in parliament. My brother, my sister, our motto in this country called Ghana of about 30 million people is what? Freedom and justice. Freedom and justice. We have some level of freedom, but that justice is not there. The rich will continue to be richer. The poor man never gets any justice go to our prison houses it's all poor people yet the biggest criminals in our society are the rich men they steal from the government who is the government it is us as a people as a nation my brother my sister we have some level of freedom but the justice is denied every time rich criminals go to the courthouse and they get injustice which they call justice and the poor man gets injustice which they call justice we end up in jail all because we are not rich my brother my sister the ghana first mantra does not work in this country in some of our local proverbs you will find out that they will tell you in other words 
when it comes to the work of the government or your responsibility to the government, you don't carry the load. You drag it on the floor. In other words, you don't have to sacrifice that much for the government. These are some of our proverbs. My brother, my sister, we don't seem to be patriotic. Nkrumah did all he could to make us a patriotic people. Unfortunately, my brother, my sister, it looks like there's still a long road to the city of patriotism. But it is happening. It's beginning to happen. Do you know why it's beginning to happen? Watch the headlines. Carlos Ahinkra explains why some NPP MPs turned against Oforiata. And who is Carlos Ahinkra? Carlos Ahinkra is this guy. Why am I interested in Carlos Ahinkra? He has been indisciplined himself. He's not been very patriotic in the past, but it looks like the man is ready. You know what he did? Carlos Ahinkra, when it was time for our elections, remember COVID-19 also came in. And it was so mystified. People even felt that by just looking at each other, you could catch COVID-19. The facts were not coming in properly. You know, when a new kind of pandemic comes out, it takes time for the information to roll out. So much fake information coming in. This guy was supposed to be quarantined because he had tested positive for COVID-19. But he went to the polling station, shaking hands with people and hugging people, knowing very well that he had COVID-19. And when it came out that this was what he did, the president decided to kick him out of his ministerial position. In fact, he was a deputy trades minister. They kicked him out. But he's also an MP somewhere in Tema. We saw him in the parliament house, stealing ballot paper and chewing those like a goat on heat. This same guy. Is that patriotism? The whole Ghana de de descended on him. He was so patriotic to his party, the new patriotic party. Listen to the name of the party. New patriotic party. Yet there's no patriotism in this dirty party. The dirty president is not interested in patriotism. The dirty president is only interested in selfishness. Carlos Ahinkra would not end there with his controversies. Samuel Okujato Ablakwa was speaking just after some parliamentary proceedings. And he bumped into the interview. In fact, he photostormed. He get crashed the interview. Went in there and started talking. You are a liar. You are a thief. And all that. My brother, my sister, the matter was handled in parliament. People were advised to, you know, smoke the peace pipe. I don't know what was in the peace pipe, whether it was Bonto or Ntampe, but they smoked the peace pipe. They buried the hatchet. The color of the hatchet, I won't be able to tell you. So that is the background to this guy talking, Carlos Ahinkra. Some people say he's very helpful. He helps people left, right, and center if he can. But that does not mean that you should be unpatriotic. Look at the story. What does it say? Carlos Ahinkra explains why some NPP MPs stand against Oforiata. The member of parliament for Tema West, Carlos Ahinkra, has explained why more than two-thirds of the majority caucus, including himself, are demanding that President Nana Ado Dankwa Akufu Ado sacks the finance minister, Ken Oforiata. Come along! Let us read it. According to Ahinkra, the MPs came to the decision after feedback from their constituents. During their recess, recess disclosed uh, that most Ghanaians, that sentence is shaky. It's not, it's, not, it's not a good sentence. I'm going to take it again. It says, according to Ahinkra, the MPs came to uh, the decision after feedback from their constituents during their recess disclosed that most Ghanaians were unhappy with the government because Oforiata was still at post. I read it properly now. Did you hear that? This is a very important paragraph. And I need you to hear it again. According to Ahinkra, the MPs came to the decision after feedback from their constituents during their recess 
disclosed that most Ghanaians were unhappy with the government because Oforiata was still at post. So the feedback disclosed that so many people were not happy with Oforiata at post. He said that most of the majority caucus MPs spoke about how their constituents were suffering due to the economic challenges in the country. Speaking in a neat FM interview monitored by Ghana Web Ahinkra intimated that they had to inform the president of the difficulties of their constituents so that it does not affect the MPs' fortunes in the future. Most of the majority caucus came to this decision because it is what our constituents wanted. This is not something we wanted to do, but it is what the people who voted for us, our constituents wanted. This was not by a rebel group in the caucus. There is a lot of pressure on us. If you go to your constituency office and you listen to the concerns of your constituents, it is very disheartening. Just yesterday, three women visited my office and they were crying while narrating how they had lost their businesses because the price of a gallon of oil they used to purchase for 600, that's 60 new Ghana cities, is now selling for 1,000 Ghana cities. The other MPs also shared their experience and we saw that it all boils down to the same thing. So this is how we came to the decision that we have to let the president know that our constituents, what our constituents want. We have to let him know, otherwise our people will not listen to us if we go to them again, Ahinkra said in three. A group of new patriotic party NPP members of parliament uh, has petitioned uh, President Nana Adodanko Akufu Ado to sack the Minister of Finance, Kero Furiata, and the Minister of State at the Finance Ministry. A do want him to restore public confidence in the economy. This was announced in a media briefing by their spokesperson, Andi Kwame Apia Kubi, who is the member of parliament for Asantia King North, in a parliament. In Parliament on Tuesday, October 25, 2022, the group said it will not do business with the government nor support the 2023 budget if the president fails to heed their calls. Listen to the last paragraph. According to them, the move follows previous concerns sent to the government that have not yielded any positive results. Dash it away. Did you hear that? You have your president. The president depends on you to be able to push the government's agenda in parliament. And you don't listen to them. Now the interesting thing about this is the MPs know exactly what they are doing. They know that this president has destroyed the party. But they believe in the saying that half a loaf is better than none. Even if you lose the presidency, they must not lose their seats in parliament. They have to make sure that their constituents are satisfied. So they decided to listen to them and take this bold decision. I congratulate you guys. This is Ghana first. The people who voted us into power, we need to listen to them. If the president is refusing to listen to the people who voted him into power, not even listen to his own MPs and ministers, because he has become Motisela, he has become King Ahab, he has become Nebuchadnezzar, the rock of ages, he never will listen to anybody, but will listen to himself because his ego failed. Then we will back off. And tell the president that we won't go on that arrogant journey with you. This is Ghana first. If all politicians will look at Ghana first. Like Trump said, America first. This country will be a better country. I have said it time and again. That our problem in this country is not only a problem of roads and hospitals and schools. It's a problem of the mindset. If your mindset is right. Even if you have one hospital, my brother, my sister, it can satisfy everybody on the land. You know why? 
Your mindset will tell you to eat well. Your mindset will tell you not to cheat and rob. Your mindset will tell you that you must not engage in things that will make you sick. So you have a, a healthy nation. You don't even need the hospital. You will only need the hospital. Time after time. Very rare situations. I'm speaking in parables. A lot of our sicknesses are coming out of indiscipline. When nature is angry with us, we get it. When we offend nature, then we get that replication. True or false? My brother, my sister, think about it very carefully. Now, these MPs have demonstrated that they are Ghanaians. That they are ready to put Ghana first. They know how much this is going to hurt the party. But Nana Akufu Addo unprecedentedly has lost favor in the eyes of the people. He has become the most arrogant president we have ever seen in this country. Left to me alone. If I had the power, I would uproot him and chop him off like a bad habit from the presidency. You know why? He's sitting and deciding for people and refusing to listen to the same people who voted him into power. Can you believe that this was the same arrogant guy who came to beg us to vote for him? The same guy who sat in the trotter with us? The same guys who drank Kalipo with us? The same guy who told us that our nation is so rich and not poor? And that it was a problem of leadership. He is the worst leader this country is experiencing right now. The city right now is the worst performing currency in the world. Yet these guys told us that they had the men. Where is comedian Baumia? Where is comedian Baumia? He has reduced himself into a non-entity. He has reduced himself into a flippant. He has reduced himself into a dummy. He has reduced himself into a certain caricature. He has reduced himself into a limitless stadium atom on heat. Hallelujah. Floating everywhere, blown by the wind, left, right, and center aimlessly. Such a fine gentleman. When he came, we all heralded him. Good brains. Now he became the boss of the finance sector. Right here, the backbone, the chairman, Bosu, because we believed in his economic brains. Today, he has become a Lilliputian. Today, Baumia has become a worm on heat. It's sad. My brother, my sister, Ghana first, as it stands right now, is what is going to save this country. Dash it away, let me deal with the next thing. Next thing I want to look at is how presidential, clueless arrogance collapsed Ghana. Hallelujah. Look at it. It's not funny. How presidential, clueless arrogance collapsed Ghana. One, cluelessness. Two, arrogance from the seat of the presidency. How it collapsed the foundations, the bedrock, the very fabric of this country. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, this is the most arrogant president in the world. He insults chiefs, talks to them anyhow. The man who begged us to put him in the presidency today can sit on radio and say, if you don't want, go and vote for the NDC. You? You? Every Ghanaian is mad and crazy right about, very bitter and very angry. I've never seen Ghanaians this angry, not even in the days of the revolution, when Rawlings did everything that he wanted to frustrate Ghanaians. This president is more than one million times more hateful than Rawlings. This president, you see his face as if he's somebody who has sympathy for people. My brother, my sister, he's worse than Satan. My brother, a friend of mine went into the shop to buy apples. And when he looked at the price, he said, wow, the price has increased. In fact, he was supposed to buy the apples for how much? Six Ghana cities. He looked at the price and the little girl was passing by and said, oh, your shoe, sir. And he looked at the shoe and realized that, oh, his shoelace had come out. So he bent down to lace his shoe. When he got up to look at the price, it had gone to 120. 
That is how terrible the economy has become. Those of you who have studied economics, this is hyperinflation. Gradually entering into what is known as, hey, what is the word? Galloping inflation. Why should we all die? Were you not the same guy who did Kumi Prekun? Slanging like Shakespeare? Today the slangs are all gone. And his village chief is sitting somewhere supporting him to continue with this nonsense. My brother, my sister, what is happening to us? What an arrogant president. Why is Black Rasta say this? Fly the headlines. Watch it. Inside story of how NPP MPs arrived at decision to publicly demand sacking of Uforiata. Hallelujah. Inside who? The other one you heard was Carlos Ahenkra. Now the real inside information. The secret. I read President Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado's comment on North Star Radio in Tamale in August that persons demanding the sacking of Kenoforiata were members of the opposition National Democratic Congress, Congress seem to have ruffled feathers within his own new patriotic party. Mr. President, please uh, reshuffle your government. It's not going right. No! Those speaking are not NPP people. They are NDC people. They want to destabilize my government. Number two, a few of them are NPP people who are looking for positions. They want me to reshuffle so they can come in. Such an arrogant talk. Read the story. What does he say? He stressed, however, that a decision... Uh, to begin engaging leadership of the caucus on the subject matter after recess was agreed. The Subin NP continued that one Sunday towards the resumption of parliament, over 40 MPs met the majority leader, Osei Che Mensa Bunsu, to discuss the controversial matter which had been put on hold. Controversial. The majority leader was then taxed to inform President Adudankwa Akufu Adu of the decision by NPP MPs to have Uforiata relieved of his post. What happened was that on Sunday, we could see tension brewing right from uh, before we even went on research. What we decided to do was that let's go back. When we come back, we can then begin to engage leadership. I woke the majority leader up at dawn and said, look, we need you in Accra by 1 p.m. Because the way things are, if you don't come and things blow up in our faces, we are done. We will not want a situation where we spring a surprise on him, the majority leader, or embarrass our president. So go to him and sit with him. And say, look, this is the position of your members of parliament. And let us have a feedback. Bwachi Enfi said. When he called the majority leader to inquire about the response for the president, Che Mensa Bosu asked him to come to parliament for a decision on the matter. He said the leader informed him in the presence of two other MPs that he did not have a positive feedback from the president for the MPs demanding Uforiata's dismissal. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? MPs in parliament, your own party MPs, have spoken to the majority leader. This is our position. Talk to the president because we do not want to spring a surprise at him. President listens to but because of his arrogance. Oh, forget about him. I'm not going to reach out for anybody. He's doing the best. My brother, that is why they decided to do that. Dash it away. That's why they decided that now they will go public with it. My brother, Kenoforata is sick, terminally ill. Sickness should not be a reason to put people away in some circumstances. But this man is terminally ill. He himself told us that he has some kidney issues and because of that he has developed some puffiness around his face. He goes for review every now and then. 
Nicodemus, they sneak in and out of the country. They said they are not using the taxpayers' money. But this guy has made enough money from data bank. All the loans coming in. In fact, they are siphoned through a certain conduit pipe that drops deposits into his account. That's what we're told. Why would this arrogant guy just say, that, hey, it looks like the majority of Ghanaians don't want me. Why don't I step back? Later, when they realize that I was this good, they would talk about me. But no, maybe when he goes home now, the money that he has to go for review will run out. And because he doesn't have any other serious investment, he might not be able to depend on the government and the people of Ghana for his review. These are people who do not even respect the Ghanaian doctor. They will never trust the Ghanaian doctor to treat them. This guy just came from England and America to treat his puffy face. President with his fat big belly runs to America and England to go and treat his pot belly. Ministers, Chair Bonsu and the rest, were we not told that they were in Dubai? Even Alban Bakbin, was he not there to treat his things? Hey, don't get me wrong. We all can fall sick at any time. I'm not saying that I am the rock of Gilbrotta. For that matter, I'll never be sick. No, sir. But if I do fall ill, I will respect the country enough, step back, push stronger, healthier people in there, support them with my brains from behind. But these guys are greedy. No. Whether they are sick and dying or not, they will still stay there because of whatever they benefit from there. Somebody, I heard somebody say that, oh, uh, the president is thinking that if he sacks uh, Ken Ophoriata, he might sulk and be sad and cry all till he dies because he's sick. So you will sacrifice the whole 30 million people minus one for one man. What the heck is happening? What is this? What is the role of the first lady in this? Because you and your husband lie on the same bed at night after all the, the noise. What do you tell your husband? Are you one of those telling him, oh, you know, Ken is a family member and if you sack him and blah, blah, so he has eaten all this into his pot belly and the nation is going down the drain. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kokushonomo. Come along, come. Come. When we return, we'll be talking some more. Hey! Wayo! This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. And my name, Black Rasta. My brother, my sister. This is where we speak truth to power. We normally would not criticize. But if we must criticize, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. Next thing I want to look at is this. Touch it. Touch it. Galamse poster kid. Spare pass dealer. Galamse poster kid, the slave queen of Galamse, who is the poster kid all over the nation. Everybody knows this slave queen who allegedly brought in five prostitutes from China and unleashed them on libidinous big weeks of this political party. They bang this, they knock. These Chinese prostitutes, and they sell the whole country to them. You heard it when Kwekubaku talked about this issue. You heard it when Captain Smart talked about this. 
Interestingly, today, Captain Smart came to tell me something and I shook my head. He said he wanted to see me seriously. I said, okay. He said, Black Rasta, you know that they said they would assassinate me. I picked up facts that they would be assassinating me within this week. I said, oh, really? But I need you to do me a favor. I said, what favor? He said, I want them to assassinate us together. Let's be working together now. So that when they're assassinating me, they will assassinate you too. Then together we'll go into the same grave. I looked left and I looked right. I said, Chairman, you go first. I'll stay behind and take care of the nation. When is my time? I will come. When you go, tell God that He should empower me to fight and make sure that the country stands. It wouldn't make sense if we come and fight and go and then the foundations are not changed. So you go first. Mriba Atta. I'll call Atta. Dikan Mriba. This is Zikan Mirba. Poster kid. Galam say poster kid. Spare pass dealer. Really? This guy is a stomach lawyer. All he thinks about is his big fat stomach. I have lost every respect for him. When I see his face, in fact, it's like I've seen Satan's face. This guy with a face like a cat on heat. My brother, my sister, anoints me every time I see him. I wish I could send him to the Volta region. So that my brethren in the Volta region will do justice to him. They will eat him with Fetridechi and Akpla and Banku. This was the same guy who said that he's defending Aisha Huang because of his stomach. You see, I'm hungry. My wife has to eat. My children have to also eat. <laughs> me too, I have to eat. And I'm a lawyer. If I don't defend her, how would I eat? If you don't want me to defend her, then tell Nana Kufu Adu to give me a ministerial position so that at least I can get a salary and then I will not defend. Hey, hey, Masa, do you know what is called patriotism? So people like this, for food, they can sell everybody. These people. This guy. Some people call him Captain Ifadate. I mentioned the name Captain Fadate. And the military called me and said, hey, be careful when you use the word like that. Military post and titles. Do you know how he left the military? I said, I don't know. Please me, I don't know. He said, don't use the captain. Just call him Ifadate. If you want, call him lawyer. They were trying to explain some military terms to me. My brother, my head is too full of history for military terms. I don't want to know the names of guns and military posts. For what? What I know is that every gun kills. And this is a toy water gun. This is the lawyer of Aisha Huang. There's another lawyer, Freddie Blay. He's also defending the other gang. Joined to Aisha Huang. Read it. Aisha Huang sells spare parts. She's not involved in Galamsey. That's what Ifadate says. Lawyer of Aisha Huang. Nkrabia Ifadate. Oh, now they've removed the captain. Hallelujah. So you have to take Black Rasta to tell you that that captain is inappropriate. Take it off before the whole Ghana is now taking captain off. This is the show you need to watch. Lawyer of Asha Wang, Nkrabia Ifadate, has said his client is engaged in the sale of spare parts, contrary to claims that she is engaged in illegal mining, aka Galamse. According to him, and circumstances, did his client engage in any activities which involved digging for gold? He asked that. It's sad that many have tagged her as Galamse Kingpin, amongst other names. He said the hopes, he said he hopes the court vindicates his client despite the attorney general's claim that uh, he has documents and evidence to prove otherwise. Asha Huang is not involved in Galanse. She sells spare parts for excavators. 
Ashanwa has never stood on the lands of or any in the Ashanti region to say she is digging all she does is sell spare parts, but people have called her names, including Galamse Kingpin. So let's see what God will do since the matter is in court. Oh, so God is a lawyer now. God is a magistrate. Hallelujah. 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 He continues. Let's see what God will do as the matter is in court. I pray the law will be in the best interest of my client. He said on Atenka Radio during an interview monitored by Ghana Web. Dash it away. Dash, 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 dash it away. You see, I've said it time and again, patriotism is the biggest problem we have in this country. Patriotism is the biggest problem in this country. And when you check it out, it breaks my heart every time we have to look around gallivanting to be able to bring the pieces together to deal with patriotism. Should you be told to be patriotic when the Americans hear their national anthem, they cry. When the Chinese hear it, they freeze. When the Japanese hear their national anthem, in fact, you see them shedding tears. But when they are playing the Ghanaian national anthem, that is when we are insulting the oh, yeah. That is when somebody says, Shake it and do one, shake it, Babanza, Damboroba. My brother, we don't even understand what it is to say the national anthem. The national pledge. It's only a recitation. It doesn't mean anything beyond that recital. When we steal from the government, we call ourselves smart. When they call us thieves, we don't understand. After all, the government lives in space. It is non-existent. The youth don't see the need for patriotism. After all, the country does nothing for them. Where are we going as a people, my brethren? Hey, sometimes I sit and I cry. I weep tears for my children. I take my children to America. They see American children love their country so much. And they ask me, how is this so? And I explain to them that that is what is called patriotism. It's not that America is heaven, but they create that heaven in their minds. Their leaders try as much as possible to look in their direction. They are not able to satisfy every need of theirs. But they work in the utmost interest of the American, not here. It's all about somebody being in politics to make one million American dollars and that's it. And such fools, when we talk about the people get angry. When I talk about fools, I don't shake. Is this the face of a man who will shake before a fool? It's because of these fools that this nation is breaking down. It's because of these people, sickly people, who are only in government to treat their sickness with our tax money. Every old man wants to be president right now. Sickly old men. They have nothing to offer. We are becoming their retirement health insurance. We all shall grow old someday. But we must not be in politics to be able to have health insurance. We are fighting for that health insurance now. It must work. It must work. It's the right of every citizen to have access to good health. Care. When Obama came and he introduced Obamacare, he defended it with his blood. That's for discussion another day. But people who are not patriotic, like Ifadate, who are only interested in their stomach, that other guy whose name I mentioned, I've even forgotten that name, Freddie Blay, 
He said politics is so sweet, he will sell his mother and do politics. Such a guy, how can he be patriotic? Hey, till we speak truth to power and not be scared to bite the bullet. This nation has no future. This nation has no future. Your children want to be like American children. Why? When they are playing football, just watch them. When the American national anthem is playing, look at how the Americans behave. When the Nigerian national anthem is playing, that's when they are looking for Akara to buy. They are looking for Ogbono to eat. That is when they are trying... What are you doing for a nation? Rather than always sitting down and asking what your nation can do for you. I shall wank all of a sudden is a spare pass dealer. Somebody who was arrested several times under Mahama. And they shipped her back. Sometimes they even freed her. When Osafo Mafo put her on a plane and sent her back to Zhuangzhou. What was she doing? Was this spare pass she was selling? Was this spare pass? The matter is in court. I pray the court. I know that the judge is listening to me and watching me. Look at my eyes. I pray you that you look at patriotism and look at the future of Ghanaian children. Look at the future of your own children, the future of this country, and pronounce the right judgment. When I return, we will talk more. We're still on Africa. The longest river in Africa is River Nile. Have you ever thought about the shortest river? Have you? Hey! Wayo! My name is Waris, but all of you know me as Comedian Waris. I come from a home where cleanliness is not only next to godliness, but a must. We seldom fell ill and we saved our doctor this headache. At an early age, my mother introduced us to our best gift ever, PJ's Acid Cleaner. PJ's Acid Cleaner kills 99% of all gems and keeps your WCs, marbles, tiles and concrete floors sparkling new and clean. In fact, you don't need any extra muscle when it comes to PJ's Acid Cleaner. It has all the muscle. When my fiancée, Mamiya, first visited me, I almost lost her. She didn't believe I was single, lived alone, and without a house help. Yet my house had this great fragrance and was always clean. I had to reveal my secret. PJ's Acid Cleaner, my family's greatest gift. For bulk purchases. Please call 0244-624-526 or 0262-233-243. Abu's Abu's chapter. Hey, oh, Sister Paulina, we're reading glasses here, Chinna, who move Hebrew. Hey, madam. My jeng pani. Tina tet hayan herbal capsule. A drawing Tina, but what is semi? Me ready, I mention glasses. Hmm. Oh, 
bro, he best yet. See clear. Hey, no crow. Tenatet Hayan Herba Capsules. A full supplement for good vision. And not recommended for children below 12 years. Asthmatic patients. Pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. Hey, bro, you baby at all. Got Tenatet Herba Shop. Hey, now I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. Tenatet Hayan. See clear. Outside of Kingston, everybody knows Kingston, but Clarendon is where I come from. I am a singer, I am an author, I am a, um, a songwriter, I am a poetess, and, I'm a, and I am an actress, right? I do the whole, I've been doing it for many, many years, and so um, basically that's who I am. I am uh, anything art, everything art, that's me. You think art and you think Diana. Yeah. <laughs> I do reggae music, I do inspirational music, I do cultural music, I do um, gospel, if you call it gospel. You know, I do. I just do uplifting, clean music, even the 12 year old can listen to it. Or, you know, or if the adult, if you feel like it needs some motivation or so. The kind of music I do will really, you know, motivate you and that's basically what I do with reggae predominantly. Okay, so the inspiration behind Bed of Roses is this. I actually, you know, bad to bad, as we say in Jamaica, there's that little stigma that has always been going on that, you know, you know, men are, most men are not good men, and you don't really have good men, especially like if they're poor and they can't take care of you. Women have two hands and two feet too, so you know, cripple, you know, you don't necessarily need somebody to take care of you. What you need is a man with a good heart who loves you and who will work to you, with you so you can build an empire. 
So, Bed of Roses is really in the defense of men and so also to really rewrite the narrative that if a man is poor, he can't take care of that he's not good. He's not good for you, which is a lie. You understand? So, there are lots of men out there who don't have a lot of money, but they, you know, they are good and upright men. You know, they, they just want someone to work with them and someone to motivate them. And so that song was really, um, you know, to celebrate good men who don't necessarily have a lot of money. Nice little ranch, don't go out you. Well, if I bet you where we plant, me not go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear me, we now we plant you. Give me a firm foundation, we not stand But of course, this is available to the public um, on our platform called 16 Bars Multimedia. So on the website, it will be that 16BARSM has in Mary, M has in Mary.com. So that is 16BARSMM.com. Definitely. I am available for live performances any day of the week. So you can contact me. On, first of all, you can reach out to me on my Instagram as Empress Diana, and my Diana has two N's, so that's Empress, which is D I A N N A, so that's Empress Diana, that's my IG. And um, also, you can also, you know, send me a, a, a link or something on our YouTube. Our YouTube is the same name of our website, 16 Bars Multimedia. We have lots of um, work there. Uh, you can reach us there, and also you can um, you can reach us at 16 bars mm at outlook.com. So that is 16. This time it's the word spell, all spelled out. 16 bars mm at outlook.com. And if you choose when you go on our website, which is the same 16 bars mm dot com, um, you can go to the contact page and send us um, a, a message. You understand? And usually we respond within a couple of hours. All right. Um, so that's basically it. And I'm sure at the end of um, this, you you will have a number somewhere to contact us. All right. So that's that's it. That's what I do. And you know, keep the music locked. <laughs> yes, sir. Bless. Nice little ranch, don't go out you. Well, if I bet you where we plant, me not go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear me, we now we plant you. Give me a firm foundation, we not stand. Sorry, sorry. Oh, Doc. Yeah, it's a word, but I don't know what I'm doing. I want to know why I did. That's why she, 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 I have to say, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. So when you stole my car, you said that you had been so sad about him. I don't care. I mean, he said if you have been forced, then you know I don't you know. Test results, not sure. Say when you have malaria, when you move you. Yeah, three D. Yes, malaria. Nani yem no so we no here. Tina tete toma. Ena tina tete malake. Fama no na no hobeto no. Tina tete malake. Ena tina tete toma. I'm on my free. Tina tete malake. Eya ma ubi awenya malaria fever. Ena tina tete tomac mesha. Eya ma ubi awenya indigestion. Yen shi shi mumu so awenya malaria and sa na wafa edui. Not recommended for children below 12 years. Pregnant or lactating mothers should consult a doctor. Boah! Skip a judge. Black pot. Koku show. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Show no more, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. The truth is just one. It's an orphan. It's bitter. Because of that, everybody shows bitterness. My grandfather said it every time. Any medicine that is not bitter cannot treat you. It's only bitter medicine that can heal you. Any medicine that is not bitter is a candy. Any medicine that is not bitter is a soft drink. My brother, my sister, that is why the truth is so bitter and it stands alone. You can help us propagate this message. We are not asking you for charity. We just want to do business with you. Take our numbers from off the screen. Call us. What business are you into? Let's promote the African business. It doesn't matter where you are. We have so many people watching us in Mauritania, people watching us in Egypt, Algeria, South Africa, Nigeria, Cameroon, Benin, Togo. Hey, Guinea. Hey, Equatorial Guinea. Hey, Guinea, Conakry. Hey, everybody is watching this show because we are the masters of Pan-Africanism. This is TV Africa. The African TV. 
It's a TV that every African watches. And we are called Pan-African TV. We are also live on Black Empire TV. We are also live on Ghana Web TV. Next thing I want to look at, let it drop like hot coals. Here it goes. It says what? Ochehene gets deeply, cheaply partisan. Our headlines are crunching. This is the chief of Nana Ado's hometown, Echimi Obuakwa. In fact, it's a very solid area full of tradition. Unfortunately, this chief is demeaning the place and making it look like a joke. Yet when they get up, they want to compare themselves to Asante Hine. Asante Hine has his own problems. But when it comes to kings and chiefs and sub-chiefs and all the others in Ghana, they respect Asante Hine so much. You know why? At least he's been able to keep some aspects of the culture straight. Since when have chiefs become so partisan? This was the man who told Nana Kufado, yeah, we will vote for you. Yeah, we all like you, vote for you. Same person said, Nanado has done so well. Therefore, remember the good things he has done and don't be insulting him. If you insult him, that you are a witch or a wizard or even you are a villager. Villager? The villages are those that are the custodians of our heritage, our customs and our traditions. So when you hear a chief say, insultingly that somebody is a villager, he doesn't, doesn't even know why he's there. What is Ochihini saying? Watch this. This is from mynewsghana.com. Ochihini contracts Eastern Region NPP. In fact, he contacts. Take it again. Ochihini contacts Eastern Region NPP MPs backing Oforiata Sack. Says Palace won't forget their names. What a joker chief. Come here. The Ochihini and Wetia of Oripeni has reportedly questioned, cautioned two MPs from the Eastern Region for backing the removal of Ken Uforiata as Minister of Finance. I need to take it again. You should know that Ken Uforiata is from that area. Nana Kufuado, the president, is also from that area. So he's trying to support somebody from his area but you see nana se oforiata is the most popular or chain in fact he was the king of nepotism i'm not the one saying it read history a lot of Ghanaians don't read nana se oforiata the grandfather of nana akufuado grandfather of this guy sitting there now or chain i'm waiting their grandfather was the king of nepotism. You know what nepotism is? Nepotism is a form of favoritism. Achim people should only marry other Achims. If Achims want to marry people outside their ethnic group, then they have to get married to influential and rich people. Read the story. He made sure that when the British came in with scholarships for people to go and study in England, he only gave it to family members and friends. Read the story of Seoforiata, the king of nepotism. That's what this guy is also doing. Ochene. Your cousin has let Ghana down so badly. Ghanaians say they don't want him. You sit on your parochial space and you want to influence people. According to my news, GH, the Ochihini Amwetia of Oripenyin has reportedly cautioned two MPs from the Eastern Region for backing the removal of Ken Oforiata, Minister of Finance. The Ochihini, who was peeved his invitation to the two NPP MPs late night to his palace was not heeded, reportedly scolded them via phone conversations for going against their brother. No brother, nepotism, tribalism. The Achimabuakwa chief to find out their rationale in person 
But the MPs were part of a group invited to a meeting in Jubilee House by President Ado Danko Akufu Ado on the same man. Dash it away. Dash! You see? By our laws, chiefs and traditional rulers are not supposed to be partisan. Because even on your land, there are people who belong to different political parties. So if you show your face that this is the person you are voting for as a chief, then what are you telling the other people? Will they listen to you when you call them to advise them again? Some of our chiefs don't know their work. It's unfortunate. Dash it away. I'm going to deal with the last thing and I'm out of here. And this one has to do with reggae and dance hall and some other things like that. Stone Boy advocates dollarization of Ghana. Come. That's a Stone Boy. That's him. Recently he was involved in a big controversy when he said Jamaicans are Africans and all that. I think he forgot that. You know, this is my boy. You know, this is my boy. He's still going through the history lessons and all that. So some of those small, small, small mistakes, you know, can be forgiven. He's a very positive youth. I love him. You know, he's one of the youth that I brought up that will still stand by me and show me respect. Or like those with maps, like crocodile maps, who will sit somewhere and, and say nasty things and negative things. Next time I'll look for the name of Crocodile Inga so that I can say it. And add Nabu. Nabu to it. <laughs> so Stone Boy here said all Jamaicans are Africans. He forgot that we have Jamaicans who are Indians. We have Jamaicans who are Chinese. And they are native Jamaicans. But that's okay. We've talked about it before. This is what Stone Boy is saying. If everything is in US dollars, then let's spend dollars instead of CD. That's what Stone Boy says. The host, a host of Ghanaians, including dancehall musician Stone Boy, uh, have spoken against the culture of uh, charging for goods and services in US dollars in Ghana, where the official legal tender is a CD. According to the famous musician, he is forced to pay house rent as well as other services in American currency. For this reason, he has expressed that Ghana officially charges the currency, no, changes its currency from the city to the dollar if nothing is going to be done to halt such activities. Dash it away. Dash it away, dash it away. All right, so Stone Boy, this is what it is. I'm glad that you brought ifs and buts and all that. That, oh, yeah, if they cannot do anything about it, then sarcastically, I want to say that you are playing sarcasm. That we should do something. Or else we could have as well put away the Ghana CD and use the dollar. But let me turn it into music, the language that you understand better. If Nigerian music is all over the place, yeah, if all the radio stations, they play Nigerian music, where they no say they no go do nothing about it, then make you stop all the Ghana musicians and all the Ghana music and then we all go sing Nigerian music. That's what you just said. That's what you just said. My brother, even if it's as bad as hell, this nation should never ever abandon its currency. Do you know what it means to say currency? The currency is like the national flag. The currency is like the national anthem. All these pieces come together so that we are a nation. Show me one nation that has no flag. Show me one nation that has no anthem. My brother, my sister, it is our duty. It behoves us to make sure that the city stands. We can't throw our hands in the air in despair because the city is becoming a toilet paper. The guy who made it a toilet paper, we turn him into the toilet man. Let him clean it up. These utterances should never ever be accepted in this country. It was done in Zimbabwe 
When Mugabe realized that he was being opposed seriously and his currency was being fought, he put away his currency and decided to use his opponent's currency. That was a rare situation. But in this country, we should rather go after those who are dollarizing the economy or else our independence is meaningless. In a which way, my name Black Rasta. I want to say thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you and I love you. Come along. Come, 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 come. I'm going to see you again in the interim. Remember, we don't talk politics. We talk patriotism. J hey! Wayo! <laughs>